The Lake of the Ozark series is presented by Point View Resort. Crappie Monster. Use promo code Flopping Crappie to receive 20% off. Mad Fishing. The Button. The Dual Digital Fish Counter. And by ACC Crappie Sticks. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Morning number two on Lake of the Ozarks. We're gonna go up the Little Niangle River right here, right through here, and uh, try to find some crappie. I've never fished upstream on this river before, so uh, we're gonna try it out. Point View Resort, right behind me. I actually, I take that back. I did fish straight up that way. There's a little cove. There's a ton of fish in there. They're all about 10, 10 and a half inches. So I want to find some bigger crappie. I fished with Kyler Beckman yesterday. We jacked up some big ones for Lake of the Ozarks. A couple pound and a halfers. So uh, we, we cracked the 10 pound mark for seven fish, which I've been told is a really good feat for Lake of the Ozarks. So yeah, we're gonna get the old mercury running and head on up river. Let's go. So the really cool thing about Lake of the Ozarks there's so many rivers and, and just creek arms that flow into this system that, I mean, it fishes like it's 10 different bodies of water. It's unbelievable. And I, I wanna show you how much food is in here. We're gonna get out to kind of this main part of this channel here. You're gonna see all the shad, probably gonna be some crappie, some bass, catfish, striper, wiper. I mean, there's just a ton of fish in here um, in this entire river system. This is what I'm talking about. See all these little, these white dots? These are all fish, <laughs> all of it. You can see them on the 2D sonar as well, right here. But these are all fish spread out throughout this deep channel. We're gonna run way upstream. I was fishing back in this area and there's some crappie back there, definitely. Oh, there's a school of shad right there. Let's see what they look like on the, oh my goodness. Look at that shad. This is what I mean by bait. Unbelievable, just giant school of shad. We're gonna run way upstream. I wanna check out a couple of these kind of feeder creeks. There's a feeder creek coming in right here. And then since the Little Niangua really isn't that big of a river compared to the other uh, river systems that flow into it, I'm gonna treat uh, this entire section right from here up as just one giant feeder creek. And yesterday we were catching fish, uh, some big fish in about 10 to 12 feet of water. Um, they're suspended anywhere from right on the bottom to maybe five feet below the surface. So that's what I'm kind of trying to target today. Try to find 10 to 15 feet of water uh, and then hopefully get some pound plus fish. I've been told the Little Niangua has really good numbers in it, but as far as size goes, it's probably not the biggest. Uh, Osage, probably the Osage arm, the Osage River probably has the biggest fish. Uh, but fingers crossed, we can actually put some pound, pound and a quarter fish in the boat today. That's the goal before these uh, thunderstorms come in. Apparently it's supposed to be off and on thunderstorms today. So uh, let's run upstream and see if we can find some fish. All right, so we made it up to this feeder creek right here. And we're gonna just, I'm gonna try to find some, it's 20 feet right now. 40 degree water temp. This is actually warmer. This is four degrees warmer than uh, when we were fishing yesterday on the Osage arm. It was 36 degree water temp. My goodness. I mean, there's fish all over the place, but I want to try to find these fish in about 10 to 15 feet of water. I feel like that is probably going to be the key for me uh, for finding some of these bigger fish. It's going to be harder to target these, out, these fish out deeper because they're just so spread out. I mean, you can see them. They're just everywhere. Now that's a good school of fish off to, to my right. But let's see if we can find some shallower. They're going to be a little easier to target. There's a ton of fish out there to, the, to my right. That's that hard bottom, soft bottom transition coming up. They're, they're on the 2D sonar right there. We're getting into the depth range that I kind of want to find them. They might be more out into the middle of this creek channel. Yesterday they were kind of on these, the edges of these creek channels and the way you can tell the edge is this, see how it's really bright? This is a hard bottom and then right off to, to my left here, that's that soft bottom transition that's getting into that deeper creek channel. 
Let's get on a little deeper water, but I'm gonna push all the way back into this creek channel to see what's back here. This is where they're gonna spawn. They're gonna spawn, all these fish are probably gonna be out towards the point, towards the middle of this creek channel during the winter time, during the pre-spawn, which is right now. And then when they spawn, they're gonna push all the way back into these little pockets, the shallow water. All right, <clears throat> so I wanted to show you real quick. This is a giant school of shad, and you can see there's some pretty good fish surrounding it. It might be bass, but you see behind it, there's a ton of fish stacked up, which could be crappie. And we're in about, we were in about 10 feet, or we were in about 14 feet, I think. So we're gonna start right here. Oh no, that's not the fish I want. There's two of them, I think the small one got it. Like a gun. Enough wasting my time in this. Let's head out, find a different spot. All right, I'm just gonna troll around with the live scoop here and see if we can pick a few off. There's one, I don't think they're big. Dang it, I was afraid of this. Tiny, tiny crappie. There's one. That's a little bit better. Still not what we're looking for. We're looking for those pounders. Looking for those pound fish. He's probably just shy of nine. There we go. That's a decent one. These are few and far between, it seems like. Definitely not the pounder I'm looking for, but it's probably a solid 11 inch fish. Yeah, I'm thinking uh, we make a run because I don't think we're going to get our pound plus fish out of here. I don't see too many big ones. Let's see what this guy does on the board. I'm thinking 11, 10 and a half. Not the fish I want. Not the fish I want. All right, we're gonna make a run. That's a good one, I think. Yep, that's a better one. Good news is we keep upgrading. Bad news is they are few and far between. I think that's close to 11. Just shy of 11. Right now I'm in about 15 feet of water and this is kind of where we were catching them further up this Osage arm. All right, I'm gonna make a run back to the resort. Let's fish one more feeder creek close to the resort just in case this storm, which it looks like is gonna pull through. Absolutely downpour. I don't have that long of a run. It's been a grind today. All right, well, ran all the way back to Point, Point View Resort, right, right there. And I'm gonna fish, I'm gonna fish close to it because that don't look too good. There's a little bit of a thunderstorm coming in. It's supposed to, they said it's supposed to be here by three, but uh, we'll see. I just wanna fish some of these feeder creeks real close to the resort, just in case it starts to downpour. I don't wanna get caught 10 miles up the lake get drenched so we'll see if we can find some crappie it's basically the video is scratching out a limit that's basically what the video is I got five or six in the tank I'm gonna count them here real quick and then see if we can get our 15 call it a day all right let's see if we can get ten more fish in the box scratch out a limit for the day this is kind of what's tough about fishing water that I've never really fished before Last time I was here, I ran down the main Niangua arm um, the first day, and my starter went on me. My st the starting motor went on me, and I wasn't able to use my boat. Luckily, Kyler was kind enough to take me out the other four days that I was here. 
So I really haven't fished a whole lot of this water. So it'd be nice to scratch out a limit. Oh, there's one. Feels like a decent one too, because it is. May have found some sort of tree that is holding some decent keepers. I'm gonna go 10. And just so you guys, he's about 10, 10 and a quarter. There's six. All right. Yep, there he is. Hmm, that's a dink. Not what we want. There's more, a bunch more down there though. Starting to turn on. They really like these, whoops. They really like these natural color patterns, clear kind of bait fish. This is a uh, margarita and then the birthday cake. Krabby Monster. There he is. That's a decent one, yes. Getting closer to the at 11 mark, or seven. I don't think we're gonna pull any pound fish off this brush pile, but I do wanna catch a limit. There's one. I don't think he's gonna make it. Oh, he might. A bunch of cookie cutters is what they are. No donkeys. Sorry to disappoint, but no donkeys today. He's just shy of 10, but he only has to be nine. There's eight. Not really the keepers I want, but it's what I'm gonna get. Not gonna work. Not gonna work, big guy. There's one. Dang it. I'm not gonna cut it, man. You're not gonna cut it. Dink fest. Got eight so far. I'm gonna go one last cove, Feeder Creek, and I'm actually gonna show you on the side imaging what it all looks like. Um, these fish are just stacked everywhere. The problem is kind of weeding out between the 10 and 11 inches to that to get to that pound range. Um, I was told the little Niangua, not the greatest for size, but there's a ton of fish in here. Look at that. Every little dot you see, a little highlighted spot, those are fish. They're probably not all crappie. There's catfish, striper, white bass, wiper, all that stuff. All right, so side imaging, all I'm looking at, so this is that hard bottom. Your brighter colors are your hard bottom. This is your soft bottom. See that darker color? Fish really pop out. That, those are the little white lines. Those are all fish. All these are fish. There's a big school of shad. Another big school of shad. All these are fish. A lot of them are probably crappie. There's some decent fish right there. Could be some good crappie in there. I fished the other side of this this cove yesterday. Caught a couple keepers, nothing big. But as you can see, there's fish loaded all through here. All the way through here, you can kind of still, let's drop the trolling motor down and see if we can hunt some bigger ones down with the live scope. Yep, 
I think that's number 10. Yep, that's number 10. Out there roaming. Goodness, these are hard to come by. They're in groups of like three and four, and they're just all scattered all over the place. I don't think that one's gonna make it. Nope. Keeper. He might squeak out to be a keeper there. That might be 12. Nine and a half. There's number 12. Three more to get. There's uh, there's one. That's gonna make it. 13. I believe it's gonna be close. Yeah, he's 10. Here we go. 14. Fourteen, I believe. Yep. Nine and a half or these are not big. I apologize for that. All right, one more to get. I know they're not big, but it is a limit and I'm gonna fry them up and then they taste the same. All right. Well, we limited out today. Unfortunately, the GoPro died on the last catch that I just had just now. See, GoPro, dead. Well, anyway. It's really foggy, holy smokes, look at this. Super foggy behind me. That was a struggle today. I guess the main point of today was exploring different water and going into new coves. This is actually my first real day on the water. Uh, last year I was here for four days and the first day my starting motor went bad on me. So uh, yeah, normally I fish way up the Osage River with Kyler Beckman. This is, guess, this is my first day kind of exploring the Little Niangua, and then I ran halfway up the Osage. Do I got a bite? These crappie are super scattered, super scattered right now. And I know a lot, I talked to a couple people on Instagram. They said the same thing in their area. They're just spread across these feeder creeks and these creek channels. Be on the live scope. This is basically, That's what they're like. They're just scattered. They're not bunched up. They're just all over the place. And so normally you would uh, have a spider rig set up. Fortunately, my spider rig poles are on Kyler's boat because we spider rigged yesterday and I just, I left them there thinking we were gonna fish today, but it didn't rain. We thought it was gonna rain. I was using the 10 foot ACC rear seat. This is actually, I fished this rod. Uh, on Truman Lake, on Truman Reservoir, last September with Kyler. Anyway, appreciate you watching. You can check everything out. Rod, oh yeah, this is the PC Fun 2000 size honor reel. 10 pound braid. Always, whenever you drive south to fish crappie, tie on some braid. Today was just a mission of find the, where the fish are and then find where they're not because I'm not gonna go back to any of those coves where I could not find any big fish. Um, I'm definitely going to have to find something either further up the Osage or a kind of a feeder creek right on the main lake of the Ozarks. So we'll see. Got a whole week to do it. Appreciate you watching. Appreciate you sticking around. Hopefully a lot more bigger fish to come. We'll see ya.